What's up? It's your girl Taylor Nixon, and I do music. Hey, how you doing? I'm Oz and Bangura, weekend manager at Patchwork Recording Studios, and I'm here with the one and only Taylor Nixon. Yes, Taylor Nixon. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm well. This is our 2020 first of the year, Type 32 MC of the month. Woo! That, that's a lot of energy right there. How you feeling today? I'm feeling blessed. Um, appreciative of the opportunity. I'm just grateful to be here. Grateful for life. Grateful to be in the position that I'm in. I always ask people this question when I start off. How did you hear about the competition? Honestly, so I was scrolling on Monday um, looking for studio time on Instagram. Instagram. Yes. <laughs> um, and I came across... I had met the um, studio owner of Patchwork like maybe two years ago. Curtis. And so, Curtis. yeah, Curtis, he popped in my head as far as like recording goes. So I went to the website and saw that you guys were hosting the Tight 32 contest. And I was like, hmm, I need, you know, studio time. So let me go ahead and enter this. So wrote my verse that night and then entered into it Tuesday. Wait, then, wait, wait. You said you wrote... Hold up. You wrote your verse before you got the beats? Yes, I did. Talk. I did. Whoa, but, okay. but let me, let me explain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote 32 bars Monday night. Okay. Entered into the contest. Then when I heard the beats, I was like, hmm. Let me rewrite. So I the beat or the verse that I originally wrote for the uh, contest, I didn't end up using it. Wow. Yeah. So I had rewrote another thirty two and then put it towards the first beat that I heard. Respect the artistry stuff. that you were like, yo, I already just I already wrote something prepping for the contest versus waiting to after I got the beat. So that's that's interesting. But let's rewind back a little bit. Where where are you originally from? I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Um, that's where I was born and raised. Went to school there all the way through high school. So, so um, funny enough, uh, Manny Beats, who is our producer of the month, he's from the Midwest as well. He's from mm -hmm. Chicago, Illinois. So, um, how growing up did that sound of the Midwest influence you? Um, honestly, I listen to a lot of like R and B music. Okay. So, um, like, I know Bone Thugs is from Cleveland, and uh, you got the uh, Ohio players. Like, mm -hmm. so just taking all of those and listening to all that. I mean, my dad listens to, like Three Six Mafia. Right. And, like, <laughs> my mom listened to uh, Luther Vandross and Winnie Houston. So it's just like a whole bunch of different crazy things blend right there. Just taken from you know all of them. So, at what age did you? look at it and say, you know, this is something I'm, you know, I'm interested in. When did the bug kind of hit you? Um, so I started writing when I was 11. Okay. And it was like poetry at first. Like, just whatever came to mind, whatever I was feeling about, like, middle school, things I was going through, I was just writing about that. Mm. And then I always loved music, so I would take, like, the words that I would come, come up with and put it, like, merge it with the song. Right. And then, like, put a little hook on it and record it. You just doing that on your own? It wasn't nobody like, hey, you should try this. No, you like yeah, I was doing it on my own. So I was in, when I was in middle school, I had a French teacher who, um, I had made a song and I was like showing it to my friends in class. Uh -huh. And she was like, what are you guys doing? Like she was upset because we were disrupting class. And my friends like, oh my gosh, this is, this is good. Da, da, da. So my French teacher was like, let me hear it. And so I played it for her. And then she was like, oh, okay, I like this. And so she ended up giving me like this little um, hard drive with a recording where I could record myself with the headphones and everything. And ever since then, I would, like, go home. As soon as I get off the bus, go home and get on the computer and record myself, make a song. Describe that feeling. I, I'm really into that, like, those type of people who really inspired you or pushed you to say, man, I can do this. How did that feel to, to ha kind of have that acceptance? Like, okay, you, you really got something here. Can um, you pinpoint that feeling? I'm trying to think. I... It's definitely uh, refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like it puts everything into perspective because like I feel this way and mm -hmm. I have this strong gut feeling about what I want to do in music and just writing in general. But it's another thing when someone else can see it too. And right. they can like like almost what's the word? Put a put a pin on it and right. say, you know, I can see it and right. I'm with it and it's like it's it's humbling and it's definitely like motivational. So. Right. So, 
what brought you down here to the A? How'd you get to ATL? School. Okay. Georgia State. I, I started off at Georgia State, and then um, through that, just kind of found like different events in the city and just started networking with different people, right. hooking up with different um, producers, artists, engineers, all of that, and then just went from there. Did you find it, I guess, maybe easier to network? Um, coming here in, to Atlanta or did you have trials and tribulations dealing with that because again I, I was just saying like again people can network online DMs mm -hmm. and stuff but there's nothing better than a real time a relationship so um I feel like in terms of the networking process it is what you make it right so like for me I didn't have a car mm. I didn't know anybody like I I have family here but they weren't into the, the music scene. Right. So it was just like, okay, like if I need an Uber here, if I need to take the, I was taking the martyr for um, like at least a year. I was on my bike. I was walking back That's and forth dope, to though. the That studio. means you know the city though. You had to yeah. learn the city. Yes, yeah. yes, I did. And it was very, it was a, an experience I will never forget, like ever. It has definitely molded me into the artist that I am. So as far as working out here now, like, who are some of the people you've collaborated with? And when I ask this question, it's not about saying like, oh, the biggest or whatever, but this is a chance to shout out your peers, the other people that you respect. Like, mm -hmm. who are some of the people that you've gotten a chance to work with out here? So I have had the opportunity to work with Sean Rose. Nice. I don't know if you know her. She's R&B singer. Mm -hmm. She's dope. Um, I had the opportunity to open up for Damani Harris. Okay. Um, and so that was like humbling in itself. Um, who else? Uh, Vet Lennon. Mm -hmm. Um, she's another, she's a dope artist, she's a guitarist. Um, multiple producers, multiple engineers. Like, I mean, I've been blessed to be, be in the room with some people who really love what they do and are passionate about what they do. So. so tell the people, tell the people where they can find you again on social media and how they can just connect with you. Okay. So you can catch me on all social media platforms at I am Taylor Nixon. YouTube channel is Taylor Nixon. Everything is Taylor Nixon. Um, and <laughs> yeah, Taylor Nixon, everything. Um, and I will be releasing music like really soon. So like I said, we talked, I have a version of um, Nas Stay and I call it Stay. And so I'll be looking to release that very soon. So, yeah. All right, again, I'm Oz Bangura and I'm here with Taylor Nixon. Mm -hmm. And we're out.